you so much for your time. Now, just, you know, so many question marks over here at 9.20 thereabouts when, you know, the outcome really came. Firstly, what is this MF Light framework and how does now life change after this? Yes, Aisha, uh, first thing is when I read this circular, hmm. not just superficially, but sure. in, depth, in depth, one thing which very clearly comes out, that you're progressing. Every circular, I, I try to classify them as regressive or pro progressive. Okay. And this is truly progressive. Of course, somebody might agree, somebody might not agree. But there is still, you have to ask yourself this question, are we moving ahead, at least in your whatever ah, opinion. Yeah. In my opinion, it's moving ahead. Why? Because there's clarity of thought. Right, MF light framework, like that's one topic if we take up mm. in the circular, very clearly says passive indices and the funds which are aiming to replicate it will have easy approvals. That means ease of doing business. Sure. Right, that implies that lower cost products which don't have human judgment should be ap uh, approved faster mm. because there's very little for the regulator to do. So that's, that's in the direction of the right thing. But one thing which concerns me on the same topic mm. is that today indices can be created and then you create a fund to replicate that index yeah. to take a shortcut. For yeah. example, you can create an index with an index provider yeah. on tourism. Mm. And then you can say all stocks in NSE 500 which are related to tourism will become an index and then five fund houses can get an approval in a jiffy for this index. Yeah. So it is not humanly managed, but it's a new concept altogether. Mm. Out in the market very quickly, without a regulatory, uh, without that kind of depth of regulatory framework. Intervention, yeah. So if you told me that MF Light is for all indices currently available, mm. Mm. any innovation will require more regulatory scrutiny, yeah. then I'd be, I'm just trying to tell you the flip yeah. sides of a long term. So I personally think MF Light is a very, very brilliant concept. Why is it a brilliant concept? One more point is, today you see, Everybody speaks of index funds. Yeah. Uh, there are two issues with index funds. We might have close to 250 index funds or passive funds. But the 88% of the assets are between Nifty and Sensex. Yeah. <laughs> if 88% is, is in two indices and the rest of the indices have 12%, then it is only optically diversified, yeah. but it is not diversified. Yeah. So too if, concentrated. So concentrated. Yeah. Top 10 stocks of Nifty have 65%. Yeah. So you're basically pumping more money into the top 10 businesses of the same company like in the US. Yeah. So double-edged so, sword as you, yeah. uh, you know, flagged it off as. And, uh, you know, I wanted to get in your take on this new asset class or product, as you said. This is with respect to HNIs. It's called uh, investment strategies. What are your views on it? Uh, my views are on, on twofold. Uh, one is I think it's a precursor. If you read between the lines, this asset class, as they call it, but I would ra rather call it a product, product class because it wraps an asset which is a derivative or a cash market equity, stock equity, yeah. right? Uh, so one, one take is that it is uh, a precursor for some curbs, mm. one. Second, if you're a retail investor, be rest assured that derivative will be not your baby. If there is going to be 10 lakhs as the limit for an investment strategy, as they've tried to name it, mm. then giving derivative access to a guy who has only 5,000 rupees in his bank account mm. to buy an option may not be the... Uh, it would be very dichotomous. So one precursor, if you're an HNI, you will get a more professionally managed uh, portfolio. Uh, HNI, I don't know what the definition is uh, from the retail standpoint. So 10 lakhs is the minimum investment. And retailers should be prepared for some curbs. Uh, that's on the read between the lines. I'll probably touch upon more. So I think, you know, the, the understanding and the thought process is the same. It's not been changed that, you know, a small retail investor should not be dabbling in the FNO market. Only if you have a certain bank balance should you be looking at because you obviously have a better risky appetite. Uh, what is the way or the correct way to do this? Will there be some sort of MF or mutual fund alignment when it comes to uh, FNO eventually? for to try and curb retail participants no i i think uh, let me uh, take a step back and sure. explain to you as a concept why should a retail investor not participate in derivatives okay i have a very strong feeling okay right because when you tell somebody don't participate it is a negative psychology it's like a telling a child that don't put your fingers into the electric socket, <laughs> right? Of course, he's going to hate me for it. He's, he or she and, is going to cry. And the first it. thing when your eyes are <laughs> away. Yeah. Yeah. But I have to also give him a replacement yeah. with a toy, saying that, okay, yeah. you don't put your finger into an electric socket, but go, here goes the toy. First, let me explain to your viewer why is derivative not a fair play for a retail investor. Hmm. 
See, derivatives are instruments which require you to understand something called Greeks. Okay, what are Greeks? If you Google, you will know. But most of the people who dabble in derivatives mm -hmm. don't even know Greeks. Greeks are alpha, uh, matlab, delta, uh, gamma, vega, theta, rho. These are five Greeks. Somebody has put his lifetime earnings and he doesn't even know the definition of Greeks. Yeah. Then there is something called second order Greeks, which is called vera and veta. These are two. So these seven things a person doesn't even know and he's dabbling his hard earned money. The other person who's an institutional investor, the person who lost 1.8 lakh crores, there must be somebody who has made that 1.8 yeah. lakh crore. That is an institution who has done a three year course on this, yeah. right? And created algorithms at AI to make sure that you have an unfair advantage, advantage yeah. on the rest of them. That's what they're trying to curb. And I personally think that regulator can't just see this as a parent. Uh, and keep quiet, uh, saying that this is happening because you have the information that who's winning and who's losing and losing and why are they losing. So do you so think if they spell that out, yeah. then it would be, uh, you know, it would curb, well, not curb as you said, but it would at least deter retail? I think it will deter retail, but I think the regulator, one expectation of mine, fair or unfair, I don't know, mm. uh, is that a clean explanation of why there is a curb. Mm. One is to tell them that you can't do it. Why is it unfair? Of course, this research report is a great first step. You have to explain why is some why are ninety four percent of them losing. Yeah. That needs to be explained. Uh, and I personally think I, we run a. I have sat on a derivative terminal for the last twenty years, every single working mm -hmm. day, and I can tell you that it is like an insider trading in a derivative. If you are betting against the house, uh, he has he or she as an institution has so much more bandwidth to have an unfair play. Yeah, and it's not everyone's cup of tea Absolutely. to begin with. And I think institutional is right in doing it because mm. they have more bandwidth, economies of scale and understanding. Yeah. They're not wrong. It's not like a clean conventional insider trading. It yeah. is knowledge based trading, which uh, is why I think retailers should curb. And before you close that, mm. the regulator has given another solution for at least 10 lakh rupees uh, with a more flexible platform. But that 10 lakh, can't it be leveraged? Because, you know, one of the key contentions was that retail was leveraging, putting their hard-earned money and then dabbling into futures and options, which they don't understand. If 10 lakh is the only criteria, that can be cuffed up. Yes, yeah, see, uh, when you look at this platform, what mm. has the regulator done is in July, they've got the first consultation paper. Mm. And now we are sitting in practically in October. Right, so they have taken two months to understand from asset management companies what is the liberal framework you need mm. to quench the thirst of a higher risk, not higher risk from zero to hundred, higher risk from zero to twenty, because mutual funds, as is as is, the regulator does not permit selling of options. Mm. You can only sell options if you have the same underlying instrument. You can buy options. People have been buying options. So the mutual fund is near near no usage to investment strategy. So they've done a lot of homework asking all asset management companies to submit their ideas mm. on this more liberal platform. And that's when I think the framework when it comes will incorporate all 10, 20 asset management companies ideation mm. will be consolidation, consolidated to create the framework. Yes. It's like bottom up regulation, which so I'm do it, but do it safely Absolutely. is all that the regulator is trying to say. The other thing, you know, and I want to get back to the MF light framework. Do you think that's also going to some somewhere instill and more align with this FNO curb eventually? Uh, stay put in the market. Don't try and dabble it and, you know, be a short term player over there. See, there are two kinds of investors, hmm. one who don't have capital. Hmm. <laughs> then if you have only 15,000 rupees, yeah. Then you are trying to say, let me go to a casino, at least get to a lakh, and then and I will think then of I'll investing. Put it in. Yeah. So now uh, I can't blame the guy who's dabbling because he says, "Mere paas capital hi nahi hai. Mm. Right? Five thousand hogi, one lakh hoga, to kuch investment karunga, kuch mm. paise banenge. Right? So that will never be addressed. And if you are looking for that, you have to go to those betting apps. Okay, capital market is not for you. You bring in some capital, some regular income, work hard. And then use this platform to keep it safe and grow it over long term, mm. create wealth and not money. If you want to make money, which is like quick money, capital markets are not for you. That's the message I think we should give to the Indian youth. Mm. 
And on the flip side though, Feroz, we have seen the SIP flows which are at record levels, at least the kind of numbers that are coming in. Retail interest does remain very strong over here. So what's your view on equity just as an asset class? Will it continue to remain the preferred asset class? Do you see an opportunity for debt? Is that picking up? I think uh, debt in India has been overdone, right? Because the government wanted to fund its fiscal deficit. The foreigner would never lend to Indian government. Just now for the last couple of years, he has even or thought of including us as an investment grade. Mm. So who would fund the country? Indian retail. So debt was a very loved asset class, not because the people were loving it. We fed into the system saying that debt safe rakhopna paisa. <laughs> right? Because we had to run our country and which is the right thing to do as a government. So now I personally think debt is overexposed in the financial assets of 410 lakh crores. We are speaking of 93% in debt only 6.7% in equity, both direct equity for households and mutual funds. Mm. So if the formation of the paradigm shift is happening, will it end at 9%? I think it will be stupid if it, India ended its equity allocation at 9%, at least on the financial asset side. So it should, it should go up uh, significantly and I think uh, liquidity mm. will be ample, uh, but I think there will be its own surprises during this because liquidity creates bubbles. Now, I was very happy reading an a, a article on your own sister company's uh, newspaper, which says that there's 50,000 crores of IPO coming this Diwali. Yeah. Good companies are needed in this country yeah. to absorb this kind of liquidity. Otherwise, we'll have bubbles which are uncalled for. Hmm. So, so you're saying Hyundai Swiggy will mark a little bit of a rest for the market. <laughs> Hopefully. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, you know, since you do handle HRI money in large chunks, I wanted to understand what other kind of innovative products do you think that the system does need right now? Uh, innovative products, I think in the HRI market, huh. innovation is overdone. Okay. Retail, innovation is zero. Mm. Unfortunately, both are operating at the diametrically opposite end. Opposite end, yeah. Okay, if you look at the top five wealth managers in this country and their allocation to debt and innovative products, on one hand, the client is buying debt, which means he is safe. Mm. In the same portfolio, you see private equity, unlisted share. It looks like two separate human beings' portfolio. Right? So I think innovation has quenched the thirst of intellectual stimulation for an HNI more than the risk reward. So coming back, I think HNI and Ultra HNI have all the innovation already. I think mm. there has to be a curb of innovation. But for the retail, you have to, you can't say you're too poor to innovate. Yeah. Right? If you innovate, you will become rich. So I think uh, they need to come somewhere closer to each other. I think HNI and Ultra HNI need no more innovation. People are buying unlisted Swiggy stocks. Yeah. People are buying, people bought Farm Easy unlisted stock, which yeah. went from 120 yeah. to 5, so 7 money. rupees. Yeah. Some people bought NSE in the unlisted space, mm. which quadrupled or even so. But yeah. you, do you need so much complexity when 80% of your money is sitting in debt? You move 20% to equity, your returns will go up. You don't need so much innovation. <laughs> It's quite interesting. The other thing I also wanted to talk about that the 200 uh, rupee SIP also may be introduced and we touched upon it last time you were here. What kind of market does this open up? Because that's somewhere trying to be an equalizer as well. That if you don't have that much money, it doesn't matter. You can go uh, via the MF route and participate in the mega equity India bull run. I think that's a very good move. See, yeah. if we have to, as a capital market, not serve our each businesses, mm. have to serve the country and its people, and country is made of people, I feel very passionately about this. If you look at how India saved, why were chit funds so popular? Because somebody in the e evening would go through the market, collect 30, 30, 40, 40 rupees every day, mm. and make his savings, and which does not pinch one's pocket. That's how all these unstructured saving instruments became so popular in India. If a structured, regulated platform allows you to invest 250 rupees a month, it's a very good thing. I think asset management companies are thinking, and I spoke to some CEOs of asset management companies, mm. and they are not concerned about their uh, profitability. And it's such an honest, good thing to do because mm. profitability is you don't, if insurance business you start nine years, ten years, you're not profitable. That's the kind of longevity a business mm. has. I like DP sir was there. In your yeah, show, yeah, he says, I am very yeah. happy to break even on the 250 SIP five years from yeah, now. Yeah. Everything does not have to be profitable. AMC's four or five listed AMC's, you look at their profits. Can they afford to contribute uh, to the country? I think 250, SIP, 250 rupee SIP really excites me uh, mm -hmm. to expand the universe uh, to even in the lowest strata, uh, be the house helps or even lower.
तो दैट मैटर फिर ऑफ सिंस यू हैव अ पल्स ऑन यू नो व्हिच वे द रिटेल बिहेवियर इज मूविंग एंड ऑफ कोर्स द एचएनआईज एंड अल्ट्रा एचएनआईज एज़ वेल एंड द काइंड ऑफ यू नो रिस्क एपेटाइट लाइक यू सेड स्पेशली इन द अनलिस्टेड मार्केट इन द काइंड ऑफ आईपीओ फ्रेंजी दैट वन हैज सीन प्ले आउट द काइंड ऑफ teasing moves that you know the debut days make and you know the stocks never fall since then and some of them which have collapsed as well farm easy being one such case in point what is that telling you about the structure and the nature of the market right now and the mood per se the mood is not risk off risk hmm. on people hmm. are loving risk because they've recently been rewarded for the risk yeah Right, they've uh, only been rewarded in the so last. That can four be years. scary. That can be very yeah. scary. Yeah. That can be very I mean, scary. Since COVID lows, you've not seen a dip, barring few odd days here and there. Correct, but I think uh, because this kind of market rally is also coming with respect, with also combined with discipline on SIP, mm. and there are not two mutually exclusive. The guy who is dabbling in derivative is also having an SIP. Yeah, we should not see them as two different human beings. When I meet a person, I just in any of these retail events just to mm. educate them. When I go, I said, "Ab kya karte?" To bolta hai derivative bhi karna. Mm. And my SIP is lasting for six years. if he was saying only derivative then i would be very very perturbed and i would be very paranoid because the guy is actually acting like a double role yeah. he is also being a dabbler and he is being very consistent with his investment so gives me that santvana the peace of mind yeah. that not that everybody wants to risk his complete savings they want to risk some to get the adrenal and keep a larger 23000 crores like our one madam said <laughs> is coming into sip yeah all things good Play it safe. That's the only messaging. But great having you on the show Thank and you, you know helping us break down what Sebi's intention is and all in a good direction.